needed some. There we go, yeah. We strongly encourage them. First of all, we thank them for his very strong leadership. We honestly believe that we would not be at this moment and the opportunity the people of Venezuela have without the president's policies leading up to this point. And we strongly urge him uh, to recognize Juan Guaido as the interim president of Venezuela, as the Venezuelan constitution um, uh, recognizes him. Uh, tomorrow will be a big day in Venezuela where thousands of people will take to the streets in defense of the constitution. And uh, we again thank the president for his leadership in putting together a bilateral, multi-nation coalition of, of countries that are standing up to Maduro's dictatorship. And uh, tomorrow will be a key day, and obviously the White House will, it'll, it's up to them to make any announcements. But um, we, we've, uh, we strongly encourage them uh, to recognize Juan Guaido as the uh, interim president of that country, as he is rightfully under the Constitution uh, of, of Venezuela. First, um, it's disgusting what uh, what's going on in, in Venezuela. It's um, when you think about individuals, you know, babies are born, don't have the right medicine, uh, don't have the food. How many people, millions of people have had to leave. People are starving to death. Uh, Madero is just an unbelievable, uh, horrible dictator. He's a terrorist. I want to thank the president uh, for his focus on Cuba and Venezuela and all of Latin America. What we had the opportunity to do is, uh, is make our pitch. Uh, Juan Guaido is the president of the National Assembly. The National Assembly is the only legitimate organization elected by the people in Venezuela. Uh, this is a historic opportunity that um, all of us talked to the president about, uh, taking this opportunity to declare him the legitimate uh, president uh, of Venezuela. The, um, you know, if you stop and think about Venezuela for a second, <clears throat> you know, there's a, you know, if you want to look at how socialism works, it, look at Venezuela. Uh, what Chavez started, what Madero has continued, there's no food, there's no gas, there's no medicine. That's socialism. And we got a lot of Democrats up here that are promoting socialism. I think what they ought to do first is do a fact-finding trip. Rather than go to Brussels, maybe they ought to go to, uh, to Caracas and see how socialism really works. But the president has a historic opportunity. I hope he takes advantage of it. Uh, we, uh, on, on top of that, uh, with Cuba, he has done a great job of uh, standing up uh, to the dictators uh, uh, Ro Castro and the dictators in, in Cuba. Uh, I think the next thing he has the opportunity to do is Title III um, uh, under the 1996 Libertad Act. Um, you, if you, somebody has stolen your property, you ought to, Americans ought to be able to go against uh, those that have it and get it back. So, but I want to thank the president for his focus on Latin America, especially his focus on trying to help the people of Venezuela and the people of Castro live under peace and democracy and liberty. I want to I uh, want to just say um, uh, I appreciate uh, the leadership of our two senators and Mario. We've been working on these issues for a long time. Uh, I join them in encouraging the president to make this call on the interim president. I think now is the moment where you, leadership can really, really make a difference for the people of Venezuela, and that's very resonant in Florida. We have the highest number of Venezuelans uh, in the country or in Florida. Uh, they're watching this very closely, and I think that would be uh, remarkable leadership if the president uh, could really take a stand here. And then also with Cuba, now's the time to put more pressure. Cuba's the cancer that leads to a lot of the problems that we see in Latin America. President uh, listened to our arguments about doing Title III. Um, and again, I think that's in the national security interest of the country. But I could also say as governor of Florida, uh, that would be very resonant, I think, to the people uh, in South Florida, particularly in Miami. Well, look, I couldn't agree more. Uh, we, we have to thank the president and this administration for their solidarity on the cause of a free Venezuela and a free Cuba, for standing up with the people, not with the regimes, to show solidarity and, and give legitimacy to the people, not to the regimes of Venezuela and Cuba. And it's a, it's a national security issue for the United States. Right now, there are, it's the largest refugee, my understanding, the largest refugee crisis in the history of this hemisphere. You have uh, Venezuelans in one of the, what used to be one of the wealthiest countries on the planet having to flee. And now they are, frankly, all throughout the hemisphere. And the solution, the solution is for Venezuela to recuperate 
its sovereignty, its sovereignty, and its uh, and its democracy. So grateful to this president. You heard what we've uh, talked about, and this president understands that that cancer in Caracas is led by the cancer in Havana, and is also spread to the cancer in Managua. It is a cancer that is a threat to our national security. And again, we're grateful to this president for his leadership, for his solidarity, and we look forward to continuing to working with him on other measures, concrete, specific, good measures that will help those countries regain their sovereignty, their democracy, their freedom. What's the question? I'm sorry. Is the president considering? I think the president's considering every appropriate option, and and if you look at where the ELN which is a terrorist organization that detonated a bomb and killed 20 people in Colombia. If you look at where the FARC has been able to stage operations from, there is no doubt that the Maduro regime is a sponsor of terrorism and a national security threat, not just to the United States, but to the region. And that's most certainly one of the options that's before the president. But I want to reiterate what everyone here has already said, so it's important for the American public to understand that Venezuela has a constitution. The guy who claims to be president now was not elected under that constitution. And under their constitution, when there's a vacancy in the presidency, the rightful president is the president of the National Assembly pending a new election. And we encourage the president today to follow through with what he's already declared, which is that Maduro is illegitimate. The next logical step is to recognize the president of the National Assembly as the rightful president of the country. Yeah, I don't like shutdowns, and I think the president has made a very appropriate and reasonable offer uh, in our republic. If you don't like the, the, the way this thing should work, is the Senate takes up this bill, Democrats will have a chance on the floor to amend it. It will then hopefully pass. It would be sent over to the House, where Speaker Pelosi would take it up. She would make changes. And But I, this isn't going to end unless both sides are willing to compromise. The president has come to the table. If you don't like his offer, our system creates a, pro, a process by which you can change it. But the, the, the speaker's position seems to be that she demands the unconditional surrender of the president on every position involving the shutdown. That's unreasonable. It's illogical. It's irrational. And this needs to end by both sides talking and both sides willing to make uh, compromises. The president's taken the first step. Now it's up to uh, Speaker Pelosi to reciprocate. Well, I, feel I feel terrible for federal workers. I, don't, I hate shutdowns. I, I, I don't like shutdowns. I don't think anyone ever wins shutdowns, but people certainly lose in shutdowns. And it begins with the men and women that are not getting paid. And that's why it is so important that Speaker Pelosi take up the president's offer to negotiate. And he's made an opening bid, which I think is a very reasonable one. The president wants to give the State of the Union address as scheduled next Tuesday. Can we hear from you and Senator yeah. Rubio and the congressman on that? Sure. Should the president go ahead and give the State of the Union? And Congressman, should Nancy Pelosi allow that to happen? Okay. I've been here two weeks. All right. I can't imagine why this government shut down. I don't, talk, I don't walk around, talk to anybody and say, oh, I want a government shutdown. Nobody wants a government shutdown. This weekend, I went and met, met with Coast Guard members. Uh, the only members of the military are not getting paid. That's ridiculous. These individuals are not getting paid. I don't talk to people who don't believe in border security. That we, we, ha we know we have to have a secure border. So why don't we get something done? Uh, it's Nancy Pelosi. Uh, one individual says, You're right. what uh, Sin Rubio said, is she just wants a complete surrender. So the president has made a proposal. We're going to get that passed on, uh, hopefully if that passed on Thursday, we can have a negotiation. Now, in my case, I want to have, I want to, I want to fix the border permanently. Why are we just talking about what we need to do now? Well, let's have a whole fix, a whole fix on DACA, a whole fix on TPS. So we don't do this every so often to have, have government shut down. With regard to the State of the Union, that's, that's, we need to have, he needs to uh, do it. He needs to do it at the House. Uh, there's no reason in the world this shouldn't happen. It's part of the Constitution. Uh, there's, uh, it's ridiculous that uh, National Pelosi is even talking about this. The, the, I think that uh, on the issue of the, of the State of the Union, the president should absolutely be allowed to give that. Um, this president has had, this country's had State of the Unions at every point in our history, including in times of war, in times of great crisis, in times of extraordinary division. And it is important that it, that it happen, and, uh, and, and I hope that it will. I hope that cooler heads will prevail on that front. I don't. If there, I, I haven't heard or seen any legitimate concerns about security. I'm confident that, that the building could be secure. Um, and um, but again, I, I really hope that they that cooler heads will prevail on that because um, 
it is important for the nation to hear from their president, as they have every year for, for over 200 years. I totally agree. Look, the, the, as, as the senator said, the State of the Union, the president has spoken to the nation in very difficult times and uneasy times. And so, to me, this is an opportunity for the president to speak to the people. Um, you know, the, the, the speaker did not, as far as I can tell, totally disinvite him. Um, I, I would obviously, if asked, would recommend that the president come speak to the nation. Um, um, it, it's an important, uh, it's an important tradition that this country has had, um, and I think it's a tradition that's going to, it's going to be maintained. And uh, as far as the shutdown, by the way, look, uh, totally agree with what my colleagues have said. Uh, today, when I leave here, I'm going to the Rules Committee because I have four amendments, like I did just a couple of weeks ago, and it's not the president's proposal. So if the Democrats don't like the president's proposal, I have a different alternative. It's an alternative. Uh, we, it, the, the parts of this of these amendments are parts that the Democrats have always said they support. Part of it is from their legislation. It deals with Dreamers, it deals with TPS, and it secures the border at 5.7 percent. Now, when when Speaker Pelosi says that spending almost six billion dollars on border security is immoral, I remind her and everybody else, and I have that if you look at the uh, discharge petition signed in 2014 to bring up the Senate bill that had $42 billion for border security. The 13th person to sign that was Nancy Pelosi. So if $6 billion for border security is immoral, then she signed on to $42 billion. Would that make her five or six times more immoral? No, the reality is that what is immoral is keeping this government shut down because of refusing to sit down with the president who has put together a reasonable offer. You don't have to accept the entire offer, but it's a good start to negotiation. And if they don't like that, the Democrats in the Rules Committee will have another opportunity today to vote up an amendment to move the forward the process forward. Well, look. At the end of the day, um, there's president's got a lot of supporters in Florida. He obviously won. He's got some that dissent from from what he's doing. But I think even of those. Who, who, who don't even approve of what he's doing, hating Trump is not a governing philosophy. And all this is, is Nancy Pelosi does not want Donald Trump to get any victories or have any progress on his agenda. And Mario's exactly right. She has supported way more than what we're talking about here. And so I can understand if there was a, if there was a substantive principle that was at stake here, but all it is is trying to deny the president a victory. And I know there were a lot of Democrats who just got elected to the Congress who ran on saying they would not just be a tool of Nancy Pelosi. And so and I hope cooler heads can, can prevail. You know, we're working hard. Um, uh, with our disaster recovery. Luckily, some of the stuff in the panhandle is still going. Uh, it may impact some of the Irma. But look, we're going we're gonna to work out what we need to work out. I just hope that, that cooler heads can prevail up here. Did you visit the border and can you speak to the Democrats who are saying that this crisis yeah. has been manufactured no. by this Yeah, I visited the border and I, and I know the issue very well. And I can tell you that the true crisis, in my view, the humanitarian crisis, is a significant uptick in the number of families with children that are arriving at the U.S. border. And that is a journey that no one should undertake. It's dangerous. These are the worst people in the world that are trafficking them. I mean, when a family and a young child, and I know these people are facing real, and I, I, it's my view that the way to ultimately deal with this is to help these nations improve conditions in Honduras and Guatemala and El Salvador so that people don't have to flee for fear of their safety. But, but when they fall into the hands of these trafficking networks that are moving children and families with the promise of getting them across the border, they're in tremendous danger. And if we have a public policy that allows these trafficking networks to sell these people on that vision, uh, because they, they have been able to successfully get people through in the past, uh, we're being irresponsible. So, so to me, that's the real humanitarian crisis here, is that children, the, the wall is a way to ensure that traffic is funneled to points of entry that can be monitored, but, but it also is a way to make it harder to cross the border. And the harder it gets to cross the border, the harder it will be for these trafficking networks to prey on these people. Back in Honduras, I've seen the flyers, guys. I've seen the flyers. We have people in South Florida that are from Honduras, and I, they've showed me the flyers that they hand out to people saying, we can get you across the border for X amount of money. Some of these people are paying a lot of money to be trafficked by these animals that are taking advantage of them. So anything we can do, not just to protect our country, but more importantly, to cut off 
uh, the, the magnet that's driving people on this dangerous journey is something that we should do. Listen, I, I, will, I, am, I am willing to, I, me personally, I am willing to support any bill that the president will sign that can pass the House and Senate. I support border security, and I think any bill that meets that condition will have to have something on border security. I know the president believes strongly in his number. His number, by the way, is what it costs to fund the top 10 priorities of the border security plan. It's not all wall. About 40 percent of it is not walls, it's other mechanisms that would be needed for border security, including personnel. But, but I will tell you that if he makes an offer and the response to it is you get nothing, you get zero, that's not a reasonable response. That is not something that you can look at and say is rational. And, and this shutdown tragically will continue until there is another side that's willing to negotiate. I was pleased to see, I didn't read the article, I just saw the headline, that there are a number of Democrats in the House that have written a letter encouraging the Speaker to enter into negotiations and bring up for a vote a bill that includes border security. I hope she'll listen to that advice. I think we all want to see the end of the shutdown, but it requires both sides to compromise. A compromise is when both sides are willing to give. The President has taken the first step. I hope that Speaker Pelosi will accept that because I think any other other position to take right now is, is unfair to those people that are going without pay and unfair to the American Would you people. the president to invite her to the White House to talk about it? I think they need to talk. I believe he has invited her. I don't know. I can't speak to what the White House has talked to her about. All right. Guys, I'm allergic to cold weather. Bye. Senator Rubio. Senator Rubio. Before you take the Senate.